Thanks, Marcus. Thank you, Sean. What I'd like to invite is Excellency Alatia to join me on the stage to talk about OPEC. <laughs> Your Excellency, thank you very much again for taking the time to be with us today. Well, we've had a very comprehensive introduction to the morning, uh, and I'd say one of the dominant themes has been there's no doubt that we are facing um, an oil supply glut in the global market. Uh, both OPEC and non OPEC uh, countries are pumping at, at full capacity or as much as they can. Um, and this is, of course, leading to a uh, drop in demand on OPEC oil. So what's OPEC going to do about that? Well, I think this is a very classical uh, you know, question. I've been with OPEC since 1972. I remember very, very well. The first time, you know, in that, in that year I joined the ministry, the court at that time, Ministry of Finance and Petroleum. And in November 1962, uh, 72, the same year, I find myself as a member of the Qatari delegation to OPEC. But I was in the back seats, not the second seat, but even the third seat. <laughs> and I was, this is the first time to be in Vienna, the first time to see this Teutonic ministers as Omizgar, Yamani, Saudun Hamadi, and all others. So I was. You know, in the beginning, I asked myself, what they are talking about? <laughs> now, what, for more than 40 years, I was living with OPEC, with non-stop, except you... one meeting, when Carlos, I was not there, because accidentally, I have a family, you know, uh, consequences, my wife, she was sick, I have to take her to London. And I was lucky, and I told my wife, you are, you have the, the right time to ask me to take you for a medical check. So, but, OPEC, I saw the oil price from $2 in 1970, after what they call it, 1973 shock. It would go until 81, I remember. The official price was 36, but we sell our oil with the high premium up to 45 to 46 dollars. Companies, I remember, they came to us offering 10 dollars above the official price. But and if, we can, if we can move away from the price, yeah. I think OPEC is quite comfortable with the price yeah. as it is. Talk a little bit about the more recent events. The different scenario of the 40 yeah, years I, is that we've seen a lot of additional supply come on from non-OPEC producers, yeah. particularly in the US. Yeah, I'm How has that you, changed yeah, OPEC's I'm thinking? taking you to the story that in 85, when the oil price dropped, even below ten dollars, what OPEC did. <laughs> we take us fifteen years. If you see the oil price from eighty-five to thousand, the average will not exceed seventy dollars, almost. So it take us fifteen uh, years. OPEC met, you know, ten times a year to discuss, to set the quota to cut production, sometimes it didn't work, sometimes country show, even member of OBEC show, not a reality, you know, cutting, but they show, and this is what we call it official uh, uh, supply, and then, uh, and, uh, and what they call it, uh, another resource. So even on, uh, during my, you know, in OBEC, we lost confidence in all the members. We only trust what they call it non-official, uh, uh, you know, as from Reuters, Blatt, and other who. But in November, you decided, OPEC decided, sorry, not you, that not to, uh, not to change the price yeah. by cutting production because it's more focused on market share. Is this a new, is it a new, do you see it as a new you battle mean, for market share, no, different the, to what was November? there before? Yes, yes. November. Yes, I've been even asked my advice, and my advice, don't cut. Because not the problem of the share, uh, the share of the, or, you know, of the market. But OPEC back in the 80s and 90s, their share of the market almost 60 percent. Today their share is almost 30 percent. Is that a concern? Do you think yeah, to OPEC? Not concern, 
but you cannot see a minority go and cut on, the, on behalf of the majority. So is there going to be a new area of cooperation between OPEC and non-OPEC? Oh, yeah, that reality? Is, yeah, that can, can uh, that happen? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I even been asked a few weeks ago from, uh, I think, Daily Telegraph of Bloomberg, they told me, do you think that OPEC will have an extraordinary meeting this coming a few weeks? Or I said, in my opinion, in my experience, I don't advise OPEC to have an extraordinary meeting without having a, a concrete decision. Otherwise, if they will go just in Vienna and sit and they will end up with no concrete decisions, psychologically it will be more collapse negatively to the oil price. The market will receive it because you know today, you know, always the commodities, especially oil, reflect by the psychological motivation. So I advise OBEC not to meet unless they have a conclusion, you know. Uh, also, what, I... What could change between November and June in their thinking? What, if we're still seeing $60 oil in, uh, in April, May, June, why would we think there'd be any difference to their decision? You think it would retain, remain the same? No, I think, you know, okay, this is different. In November is ordinary meeting. When they met an ordinary meeting, it not has a reflected of the cycle. But when you say extraordinary meeting, yes, people they will start to wait. Oh, OBEC may take decisions. And what about should. in June? What do you think is going to happen? Hmm? In June, when they meet for their schedule? Well, I think, you know, uh, as an ordinary meeting, they will uh, never happen to nothing. If not the other major producers, non OBEC will cooperate. And they will, if they cooperate actually, yes, they can have a decision, but in a condition that not OBEC only, OBEC no more can be a single producer. No, we, saw, no. we saw a lot of shuttle diplomacy before the last OPEC meeting, visits to non-OPEC yeah, members, which didn't seem to come to any sort of consensus of yeah, what to do. This, yeah, and now, in fact, we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing OPEC and non-OPEC producers competing for demand, competing to secure their demand yeah. with Asia, and there's no sign of them cutting back on yeah, that. I think normally, you know, the diplomacy, the start now, contact with uh, some you know, major non OPEC as Russia, as Mexico, Norway, and talk and others, you know, and how, and all these oil producers, non OPEC, as even Brazil, they start, you know, to increase their output in the market. Even, you know, you mentioned Iraq, that they reach 3.6 as an historical, you know, uh, uh, you know, production, but in the end of the day, with the benefit of Iraq will increase more and more oil and the oil price will drop more. Iraq will not benefit it. Only it will consume their uh, you know, oil for nothing. But do you think that in the short term now, you've, we've seen Iran and Iraq decreasing their prices to either just to maintain that market share. Everybody's competing for that demand, including Russia. Uh, do you think OPEC, some of the OPEC producers will start to possibly direct, redirect their supplies to a new demand market to Europe? You know, there... Let me to go back, you know, in the, in the 85 or 90s, when we, OPEC, decided in Vietnam to cut, to cut production. What happened? We never, you know, take the oil price to the right track. Because we cut production from this side and the other side, they are producing more oil. At the end of the day, as I told you, we spent 15 years to see how to balance. The, remember, you know, even in back in 2000, we created what they call the band, this to fight 22, yes. 28. Band, yeah. yeah, and this is our band to protect it. We call it the band style. And it takes us also a few years to, you know, to settle and the balance. But always, never, uh, you know, succeed at that time to take truck, you know. The market was dramatically changed. The demand came from China and India, changed the whole concept. And, and new production came online from other producers yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, also, yeah, that. but why the oil price go up in that time? Not because that OPEC succeed, you know, to, uh, to balance, you know, and, you know, to fix the price. OPEC never fixed the price. But time, China and India, the newcomers, the new, they came. 
and they consume a lot of oil. If assuming China and India at that time, they will not consume, or Europe at that time, you know, uh, will not consume oil. Their uh, consumption was reducing dramatically and that. But, you know, we can see that China and India played the most role in, the, in, the, in 2000 and, and up uh, to support the oil price, and then the oil price go sharply to 110. Even I'm against this price, 110. I always believe over 100 and above is very, very bad. What about $60 oil? Do you think that's sustainable if it's going to last for the next two to five year period? I All things remain. Yeah, good. I think, you know, I. I always support that, you know, the oil price, uh, you know, even uh, uh, it, uh, in your question was 50-50. And uh, I think it's uh, really, it's, uh, this is a gift, uh, you know, the, the expectation. Uh, you know... Uh, Do you think uh, that the oil price uh, adjustment now and that we're forecasting for it not to recover significantly in the near future is that going to impact, we saw a survey question on that earlier, whether it's going to impact investment and new production, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think that's going to happen? There was an article that said Aramco is planning to cut its spending by $10 billion yeah, yeah, yeah. this year. So I, we are seeing an impact Yeah, from I that. saw this article, not even Aramco, but I saw, this, as well. yeah, I saw this article say Aramco and IOC and OEC, they will cut trillions of dollars uh, of you know, new projects. And they freeze a lot of the project. Yes. Until th until what point in time do you think I they need? I think what, you know. I think they until to they reach how to correct themselves. I believe in the Gulf countries, especially sixty dollars still is not bad price. If they will correct their budget reformers, cut the fat, you know, balance the budget, it will uh, is not uh, is not that bad. Also, I believe that with this oil price, the drilling cost will go down, the construction cost will go down sharply, and I think there are some positive also that we can get an advantage and live with it. We have to live with it. We, we, we have to also to do a lot of measurement about subsidizing, about others, because we cannot just wait and say, and just wait and see, okay, we will wait until the price go up again. I think this is not the right, you know, thing. I think uh, the scenario don't do nothing, it will not work. One more question, uh, Your Excellency, on OPEC as an organization, uh, and you're a veteran of that organization. Given what we've been talking about today uh, and the outlook and new production coming online from other countries, do you think the OPEC, the era of OPEC, uh, is over? I mean, are we looking to expand it to include non-OPEC producers as an official organization? No, I don't think so. Oh, is there a point of it yeah. remaining as is? No, I don't, I don't think that the OPEC era is over here. And I believe if there is no OPEC, should be, must be there, there will be OPEC. OPEC at least, you know, they even, they have a good share in the market. And at least as a group, can balance the market, can discuss with the other, even an OPEC, even with the producers and consumers there. OPEC, you know, it will continue to do its, their rule. I mean, I, this, this uh, question, I hear it back in the 90s when the oil price go down to the dollar, they say the OPEC era is finished. And, and it's been in the, in yeah. very much talked about re in recent yeah, history. But well. I don't think so that uh, we can see OPEC, you know, because uh, we always believe the oil price is, is, a, is a cycle, go up and down, go up and down, and we get used to it. What this will it take for non-OPEC producers to be more cooperative? I think, you in know, we tried supply. back in the 90s, you know, and the, even in the early 2000s, I remember we had a lot of meetings with the, with the court, non OPEC producer. We invite even very small oil producers and big oil producers. They came to OPEC, and the, we call it, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the, in the official meet, uh, the opening conference. They will come, and they, I, hear, I remember of them, this a few ministers come from different uh, small producers and uh, big producers. They will give you a nice speech. Uh, you know, they, it, it, we support OPEC to cut, but they never cut. They will never cut, but we support, they support us to cut. 
And what about within OPEC? I mean, some producers are suffering quite significantly as a result of the drop in oil prices. Yeah, it will. How long can that be sustained? And this yeah. is the problem. You know, if we have a disease, you should cure it very quick. If you leave it to spread, it's a very difficult to. The problem with this, you know, with the other producers, they want, you know, uh, this is what they say, who will cry first? <laughs> They think that OPEC will cry first, so they will, OPEC will come quickly to Vienna and declare cut off production. I believe it's no more that way. They get used it back in the 90s, you know. They came, support you, and they believe that they should not cut OPEC. You were the swing producer. Yeah, yeah. but the time of our share is bigger than our. Today, with 30% share, we cannot be a swing producer at all. How can a minority be a swinger producers? And the majority is not a swinger producer. It's not, you know, the reality. You know, recently, you know, Obic, you know, historical that uh, they will, uh, I believe their, their survival, uh, you know, even, you know, uh, a few months ago, I received uh, a proposal from different countries, member of Obex, even, an official delegation came to Qatar to meet me from different uh, and they proposed to me to be the new general secretary. And of you declined? Uh, you know, the problem, uh, uh, yeah, I dec you know, because now in OBEC they have four candidates and everyone blocked everyone because, you know, in OBEC it must be all the country agreed. If one country not agreed, so they, I believe that they thought that I'm the, the compromise. You probably would be a good choice. I mean, is there, do you think uh, that, that, would, that would be a very difficult I, job? I, I rejected, you know, for a different reason. I love OBEC, you know. I've been in OBEC more than 40 years. I you know OBEC very, very well. I can write a big book about OBEC. But, you know, the problem, I cannot move to Vienna and settle there. You support OBEC. Uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, you know, to be a general secretary, you have to, you have to move live in Vienna. and sit in Vienna for full times. And so I don't believe, you know, I am not, you know, the way now to have the challenge. You know, I have the challenge, but, you know, I believe that uh, I can, after 45 years working with the government day and night, now the time to give also to rest not retired from, maybe, uh, you know, to leave the government, okay, but uh, people, uh, you know, somebody asked me now, if, uh, you know, if you retired from the government, I said, yeah, I retired from government, but I never retired from life, because of still I can give more, you know. Good advice. A, a good advice in the energy sector. I lived with this energy sector for more than 40 years. So, even, uh, even, some, most of the time when I talk, I talk about energy. I cannot talk about another topics. People ask me why, always talk. Of, this is, I say, this is what I've been raising for many, many years. Uh, so, but I believe that, uh, I, you know, I advise OBIC that in the general secretary, because, you know, general secretary, three years plus three years, two terms. Mr. Al-Badri now, he exceeds two terms. This is the first time in history in OPEC to extend for... Uh, nobody, nobody wants to be Secretary General? <laughs> no, but because we, have four, because we have a four candidates. And OPEC, and this is not the first time. Mm -hmm. You remember back in the 80s, we had the same problems in the 90s. And always we have a compromise. Uh, you know, then we bring Soborto, then we bring Lukman as a, a compromise in that time. But uh, they will continue, you know, now they have to, you know, now they extend to Al-Badri. Al-Badri is a good man. And I believe I advise them also, if they don't reach uh, for a compromise one, to extend for Al-Badri another year. And to extend it another year. <laughs> and another year. Until they, because now Al-Badri is a full-time, you know, general secretary. So, and he's a very, a very good, very professional. And he has a difficult job to do. Oh. Your Excellency, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you. If, you, if you'd like to.